Number 13. Calculate the maximum deceleration of a car that is heading down a 6 degree slope, one that makes a 6 degree angle with the horizontal, under the following road conditions. You may assume that the weight of the car is evenly distributed over all four tires and that the coefficient of static friction is involved. That is, the tires are not allowed to strip, slip excuse me, during the deceleration. Calculate for the car A on dry concrete. All right. So first, here's a nice little picture. All right. And uh, the next thing we need to do is really detail in order to figure out the decelerations or negative accelerations, right? In this problem, we need to detail a free body diagram. So uh, let's do that by first drawing a set of axes. Now, after the, I draw this set of uh, axes here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to now line it up right underneath the object, all right, that I'm discussing. And what I need to do now is make the positive x-axis, or just the x-axis in general, parallel with the slope. All right, so I'm going to rotate the structure that amount. Now, how much did I have to rotate that? Well, I had to rotate it exactly six degrees, all right, to make it parallel. So, in other words, whatever, uh, whatever this angle is here, will be the angle now that the weight of the object, let me draw a straight line, that the, that's a little too long, that the weight of the object, all right, makes with the negative y-axis. So the angle in here, all right, the angle right in here is going to be six degrees. Now that's important, all right? So this is the weight vector, right? It always points straight down. Now remember that weight vector is in both the negative y and positive x axis. Right? It has both negative y and positive x components. So what we need to do is break this up into its components. Here's the uh, positive, excuse me, negative y component of the weight. And then the positive x component will be this little line right there, right? So that is right in there. That is the w sub x. Okay. Also remember there's a normal force involved, right? That's a force perpendicular to the surface and it is of equal magnitude but opposite direction of the uh, weight in the y direction. So I just write something like absolute value, okay? So because it's going to be positive. And now here's the thing, right? Um, the truck is now uh, rolling down the hill, okay? So we have to calculate, I mean, how do I know that? Because they're asking us to calculate the maximum deceleration. So it's rolling down the hill. And remember, friction always opposes the motion. So therefore, I know my frictional force will be pointing in that direction. All right, it's pointing in that direction. And here's the force of friction. And static friction, that is, right? That's the frictional force that they wanted us to use. All right. So let me just get positioned now, get ready to really start writing. And, um, and now what we need to do is we now need to start detailing um, how we're going to find this maximum deceleration. Essentially what we need to do, right, if you're thinking about how does acceleration connect to this, remember that the sum of the forces in the x direction equals max. All right, so we're really trying to find this a. So I have to detail all the forces in the x direction. So notice the forces in the x direction are w sub x and the force of static friction. So I'll say something like w sub x minus the force of friction static friction that is, will equal max. All right, so really I can't move on from here. What I need to start doing is start being able to substitute the weight value uh, on in. Okay, so I need to f somehow come up with a relationship between w sub x and weight and the force of static friction and the weight. So let's do that down below on the right, on the uh, left-hand side. All right, we've done this a bunch of times now in the prior problem, so I'm going to kind of speed through this. So to find, to relate the W sub X and W, we're going to use, uh, notice the triangle that we create, we're going to use uh, sine, All right? So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, that triangle right there. So I have sine of six degrees will be equal to W sub X over W. Solving for W sub X, it becomes W sine of six. Plug it in. So that's now W sine of six. Okay, now same thing. Let's try to uh, now calculate the force of static friction. Remember, here's the force of static friction over here on the right-hand side. So recall that the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu sub s times the normal force. Now, 
The first part of the problem is they want us to do this on dry concrete. So go to your table, try to look up rubber on dry concrete. Here it is. And we're going to use the static value of one. So let's go back. So the force of static friction is less than or equal to zero, oh, not zero, but 1.0 times now the normal force. We'll go back to the photo. Here's the normal force. How do I find the normal force and relating that to W? Well, we realize that the normal force is the positive value of W sub Y. And W sub Y is a component of the weight. So we can do a little trigonometry in there, right? To find uh, or to find a relationship between W sub Y and W. So let's do that. So we're going to use cosine there. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of, what do we have here? Six degrees is equal to negative W sub Y over W. So W now is equal to negative W sub Y uh, cosine of six. All right, cool. So now remember that F sub N is just the, right, essentially the positive value here. All right, so it's just W sub Y cosine of six. And then we can take this now and plug that in for F sub N. So we have W sub Y cosine of six. All right, now since they're asking for the maximum value, what, what I'm gonna do is just basically convert this less than or equal to sign into just an equal sign. All right, uh, since they're asking for the maximum value. So W sub Y times cosine of six. All right, perfect. So now I realize I do have my value. So guess what I can do now with this value? I can now plug it on in right in there. All right, so let's do that. So minus then the value here, 1.0 W sub Y cosine of six. And that will equal MAX. Okay, now let's see what we can do. Um, let's now pull out, we have a, oh, what did, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Did I make a, yes, I made a silly mistake, guys, because I realize now I have W sub Y in here, and here's W. I needed to have both W's in there. My apologies. Let's go back quickly. Right in here is where I made my mistake, I just noticed. I switched these two around, right? It should have been should have been the other way. This is W sub Y, and this would this just be W, okay? So I apologize about that. So this is just W in here, okay? Just simple math, um, simple math mistake. All right, so apologize. Let me just erase, and then erase. Okay, I'm always checking to make sure things kind of make sense here, and that's a good way. I actually do this on purpose, right? Yeah, yeah, I do it on purpose so you can you can see me mess up and learn from my mistakes. All right, so now I have finally correcting this equation right here. I just have my W. Okay, guys, now I'm going to continue from here. So I have W in common in both terms, so I'm going to pull it out. So I have W, then this is sine of 6 minus 1.0 cosine of 6, all right, is equal to MAX. Now, expand the W to MG, right? Because remember, W is equal to MG. So now I have MG times sine of six minus 1.0 cosine of six is equal to MAX. Great, guess what happens to the M's? They go bye-bye, they can cancel, divide out M from both sides. So now we simply have this expression, G times the sine of six minus 1.0 cosine of six is equal to AX. All right, just remember one thing. Where did the 1.0 come from? Remember, that was simply the mu sub s. All right, so when I do b and c, I'm just going to change out this number. I'm not going to go through the whole formulas again, all right? So um, here we go. Um, so let's just calculate. So we have uh, g, right, 9.8 times, parenthesis now, sine of 6 minus one times, well, I don't even need to put in the one, cosine of six. And what do we get? We get negative 8.7, right? So AX in here, so for letter A, right? Um, <clears throat> A sub X is equal to negative 8.72. Negative 8.72 meters per, oh, that looks like a weird M, meters per second squared. So that's for letter A, all right? So that should make sense. It is able to decelerate. It is negative, so it is pointing backwards. All right, so how about now for letter B? 
the only thing I'm going to change now in my formula is instead of 1.0, now I'm going to use um, rubber on wet concrete, right? Because if you read letter B, it says on wet concrete. So go to your table. Here is rubber on wet concrete. Now it's 0.7. So like I said, instead of using 0.1 here, I'm going to now use 0 0.7. So simply redo the calculation, just plug in 0.7 there. So now it becomes 9.8 times sine of 6 minus 0.7 times cosine of 6. And we get now a value of negative, so a of x now is equal to negative 5.60, right? If we round meters per second squared. Now that should make sense, right? We, we, we don't have as much stopping power on wet concrete as we do dry. Right? That's why driving becomes a little more dangerous on wet concrete. And now, for letter C, we're going to do it on ice. So now we're doing it on ice. And let me just change the color, sorry. And it says on ice, we're going to assume that the mu sub s is now 0 0.01. So my new value down here in my formula right, is, going to be, uh, <clears throat> is going to be 0 0.1. 0, 0. Okay, so now just calculate that. So 9.8 times... And the sine of 6 minus 0.1 cosine of 6. Ooh, it's not even negative anymore. So a sub x is equal to 0 0.0497 meters per second squared. Notice how it's positive now. So guess what? If you're on ice, look out ahead. You're not going to be slowing down. You're going to be speeding up. All right. So, guys, hope this helped. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do remember to subscribe. That would be great. It would help us out tremendously. And I look forward to helping you in the next question. Take care.